The Abia State Police Command has warned members of the indigenous people of Biafra to stay clear of the burial of the parent of their leader, Namdi Kanu. The Commissioner of Police there, Ene Okon, said the police would not allow IPOP to participate in the burial. He added that if members of the prescribed organization were seen anywhere around the burial venue, the police would scatter the burial. Still with me in the studio is legal practitioner Noble Obasi. Thank you very much for staying. My pleasure, Felicity. All right, let's get this. Um, the, commission, the, com the reason we're having this conversation is the commissioner of police is saying this group is prescribed. Therefore, if they appear, they will not allow the burial to hold. What's your reaction? Okay, so I totally understand the sentiments of the commissioner of police because it's a prescribed group and um, he wouldn't want them to, you know, to come anywhere around, you know, around um, the burial um, venue. Okay, so I get the fact that he's trying to do his job. He's trying to uh, act as the chief security officer of Abia State. But then again, he has to uh, be a little bit um, flexible. Okay, so when I say flexible, so my... My point is this, so if these guys, if they come, because IPOB, we all know that federal government has prescribed it, but if they do come as individuals, would they still go ahead and arrest them? Or does it mean arresting them as, an, as a group of associations? Okay, I think he, he actually mentioned that if they see any paraphernalia that has to do with IPOB okay. or any gathering that says they're IPOB, that they will disrupt the burial and it will not hold. So could that be that you could come as an individual, mm -hmm. but not as a member of that prescribed group? Yeah. Would that make more sense to you? Yes, I think they should just uh, uh, respect the law. I mean, they should just respect the position of the Commission of Police and, and come individually without uh, uh, you know, displaying any paraphernalia of IPOB. I get the fact that Nandi Kanu's uh, uh, late parents, Nandi Kanu, the, the, the deceased, uh, we are the, uh, the, the late king, parents yeah. of... Uh, you know, the Nandi Kanu, yeah. exactly. Yes, and also a, um, he was a they were a, a, he was a traditional ruler yeah. in Afaruku. So I get the fact that they wanted to pay you know due respect to him in 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 a grand style, but because of the situation on ground, they should just tread with caution. Do you see them define the CP? These guys, uh, I wouldn't know to be honest with you, but. I don't know. <laughs> okay, we shall see on that aspect. But yeah. let's look at Namdi himself. Yes. Um, he's been reacting on social mm -hmm. media, taking to all platforms to share um, his position on the matter. Do you think that besides the members now, Kanu himself jumped bail? That's yes. what we know. Yes. And so long as um, he is not in this country, he might get away. But so long as he sets foot here, he will be arrested. Yes. Do you think that in spite of knowing this, he would brave the consequences and come to Nigeria for his parents' burial? Because both his parents are dead. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he would um, I don't think he would want to take that risk. Knowing fully well, you know, that uh, if he comes back to Nigeria and he's being caught, I mean, no going back for him. But this is the man that he talks really tough. He yes. talks that yes. he, he will. And then there are groups coming up to, even mm. a group has come up to caution him. I think they call themselves an Igbo social cultural political organization, a Mobi Bo Forum. They've yes. come out to say that he should stay off the yes. burial. But do you envisage a scenario where he will be defiant and come? I think you should listen to a wise counsel and stay away. You should stay clear of the venue. Yeah, the, 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 but wouldn't the, that present him as a coward before people? Okay, so if he comes and he gets shot and he's dead. Okay. So you would rather he stays alive and continue the agitation than I mean, to come and, you know. But uh, would the, do you see a scenario where the federal government will shoot somebody uh, because he jumped bail and he is back in the country? Okay, so if Or would not, he be arrested? If not, he kind of comes back. You know, with the tense situation on ground, it's not gonna be an easy. It's not gonna be an easy tussle. You know, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna be very, very rowdy. And I know how it is in Nigeria. Once it gets rowdy, everything, anything is possible. Yeah, you, yes. you'd rather such a situation is avoided. Exactly. Okay, let's let's look at another scenario. Uh, a group, I think the Ohanese youths have come up to mm -hmm. ask that the president grant Namdi Kanu a presidential pardon. 
Okay. So he can come for his parents. <laughs> <laughs> so he can come for his parents' uh, burial. Okay. Do you see that as even a slightest possibility from this government? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, but if the, if that becomes a possibility, okay. let's just in an El Dorado where this happens, and the government says, "I want to give you presidential pardon." What kind of scenario are we creating? What do you envisage will be the ripple effect of such a decision? If the federal government grants him uh, presidential pardon to come back, you just be careful. You should be careful. So it might not be real. Like I'm asking now, the <laughs> the scenario, the likely scenario that can occur, okay. not just from IPOB now, oh, yeah, so, but the generality of Nigerians, yeah, so they how would they take that news? So the, the, the attitude and perception of Nigerians, if the president makes such declaration, would be that the president is uh, tacitly supporting the IPOB. And I mean, for, from, for, from southwestern part of, um, southeastern part, uh, point of view, they might not really say anything wrong with you know the, declare, the decision of the president, but from the other uh, other re region, other tribes, they might you know find some um, fault with that you know that decision. So I think the president would want to play on a safe side and then uh, not do anything and not tr uh, try to be seen as supporting Namdekan or IPOB. Okay, let's look at another scenario. The I probably uh, took to social media. He, he said he, um, he has information that the army wants to target people in their hotels, okay. especially IPOB members yes. and leaders who would be coming to grace the occasion. Okay. And he's raising an alarm. That's the way the report was given. Uh, the Nation newspaper reports that a, a source, an anonymous source in the army, discredited that um, um, comment by Nandi Ganu saying that um, there is no plan in place like that to raid. I mean, are you going to raid private um, host, I mean, raid hotels without any information? How are they going to monitor uh, these people? So what I'm, what, what I'm basically asking is, who do we believe? Again, is there any alarm needed to be raised considering that the CP has said IPOP is prohibited from coming here? Is that really an alarm in itself? Because if you look at it, he's saying he's raising an alarm. People should come and see what's going to happen. Okay, so um, for now, those alarms are like assumptions. You know, uh, you have not, we do not have uh, concrete evidence to say that, okay, this, was, this is what is going to happen. And from the military side, you know, uh, yeah, well, they've discredited it that, that nothing, that they don't have such um, intention of, um, you know, of, uh, 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 visiting people in their hotel rooms to, you know, targeting people at, uh, at their hotel rooms to arrest them in the in the name of those people being members of IPOB. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't know how he, he where he gets his information from. But then, it's it, it's it's just assumption. It, it could be because he says if you if you look at the fact that just a couple of days ago, uh, the army did a display of might in that same area. Yes. And they said some local residents ran from fear. You yes. know, they wanted to stay yes. away. Now, yes. a statement has been issued by the spokesperson, the powerful of the group. Mm -hmm. And yes. he's saying that the army was trying to intimidate uh, the people. Is he just blowing um, hot air? Or do you see a repeat of such behavior by the army on the day of the burial i i i wouldn't i i wouldn't really know why um what the the, the military are up to you know on the day of the burial i can't well, do you see a, a possibility that these army i mean um, officials of the security forces will be heavily around that area most definitely they, they, they would be on the day of the burial Namdi, Namdi, Kano and IPOB, they are now, uh, 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 say, I wouldn't call them politically exposed uh, personals because he's not a politician, but they are now um, red flag individuals, uh, red flag individual and red flag organization. So the military, there will be heavy military presence, there will be heavy security, not just military, there will be heavy security presence during the burial of, in, of his, of his uh, late father. But then, they should, uh, you know, they should uh, tread on wise counsel. They should, they should, you know, lay low on that day, you know, 
um, take things as it comes, not being, not trying to be confrontational. Because they should not forget that uh, these guys are, they, they could be trigger happy, and they are one minded. I mean, they have like but a mandate. They, they, so okay, but they could so, have be some, you know, some strength to this because the brother of Anamni Kano has come up to say that, please, that they do not want uh, the soldiers around the venue of the burial of their parents, yes. and that they would rather they stay away. So if you look at that, do you think that his, his words will amount to nothing, or there is a possibility that the burial will be moved to an indefinite time, considering the security co concerns? I mean, if they, if they want to move the burial, where would they stop moving it? Because... As it seems, this administration is going to be in power until the next three, four years. And this administration is actually, you know, the administration that, that empowers all these military people to do whatever they're doing in Abia State at the moment. So, Nandi Kano's brother, I get his, I get this, I share his sentiment. I mean, he doesn't want people to come to a burial ground that is supposed to be a place of solemn, you know, a place of solemnity, and people are scared of, for their lives. People are, you know, because believe me, you some people will not even turn up. Some people that regularly, ordinarily they would they would love to, you know, be at the venue, but seeing security apparatus everywhere, they wouldn't want to come out. So I, I share his sentiment. I, I understand the fact that he doesn't want he wants calmness to be at the venue. So I think perhaps you know this is uh, the, the military. They have their own uh, mandate. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, they have their own mandate. But then I get Nandi Gano's brother. He wants to just want calmness, peace to just reign on that day of the burial. One final thought before I let you go. The, there are comments on social media saying that um, the threat by Namdi Kanu against the commissioner of police and his mm -hmm. children, he the made case. a threat to them that yes. he will hunt them if anything happens <laughs> to um, his family or okay. anybody that came uh, for the burial. Some are saying it is ill-advised and too erratic a behavior for someone who should be trading the part of caution. What do you say? I was sharing that, that same sentiment. I mean, you should trade with caution. So you should, you should not try to aggravate the situation at the moment. You should try to, you know, uh, trade calmly, you know, not bandy much words with these people because they really, I mean, from all indices, they really mean him. Like, they, they just want to bring him to book. So he just, he should just trade. Is this part of his persona to present this tough exterior? Because as we, he's been talking tough. At some point, there yeah. were speculations that he's going to come in. But the fact that he, there is every likelihood that he will take the part of caution and not come in. Yes. So he's not arrested by the Nigerian yes. government. Yes. Doesn't that make that persona, you know, vague or fake? For him, right? Okay, so he, he talks tough, but it doesn't match his uh, words with action, right? Yes, okay, that's so the impression. Yes, that's the impression we get. I mean, yes, uh, he, he wouldn't want his head to be roasted. So he would want to stay uh, clear, of, he wants to stay clear, you know, uh, from the military, you know, on the day of the barrier. So I think he, he wouldn't show up. He's just talking, he's just uh, he trying to um, uh, ginger his followers that, oh, I'm still here. But then again, he should just be careful. I mean, he should tread softly and bury his, his, his dead parents in peace. Thank you very much for your time on the program. My pleasure. I'm glad you can make it. And thank you for staying with us. Well, we'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take still with us. The Nigeria Customs Service has said it has commenced investigation into the ownership of about $8 million seized recently at the Mouritala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. The Comptroller General of Customs, Colonel Hamid Ali, retired, made this known in Abuja as he briefed members of the House Committee investigating the under-remittant of operating surplus of some ministries, departments and agencies to the nation's consolidated revenue fund. Colonel Hamid said after thorough investigations, the fund will be handed over to anti graft agencies to perform their constitutional obligations. It was given us conditions under which the so-called Abacha loot was to be returned to Nigeria. We also find ourselves, one of us, in Nigeria, and also looting, trying to, add, to loot dollars out of our own country. Was, uh, was quite unfortunate. 
but we, we commend you, we commend you, commend the agency for the service, for being uh, vigilant and proactive. Uh, all we can say is to urge Nigerians to cooperate with uh, customs and all other law enforcement agencies and give information as to what is happening that is not good. You see something, you say something. Uh, our men had an information that uh, some consignment of money was to be moved. And uh, fortunately, they, they, they put their own uh, uh, the men on a latch. And behold, we had a bear called uh, Nako Beku, driven uh, on the 16th of, uh, of uh, January, uh, driven to the tarmac. Then there were about three commercial aircrafts on the ground. Uh, we, up to now, we are, we are still in the process of an investigation to know which of these aircraft was were this group supposed to be loaded on. Uh, but the vehicle was intercepted on the tarmac, and uh, my, uh, the custom personnel accosted the driver and asked him, because by right, that vehicle is not supposed to be there. There are names quite okay written on some of those uh, bundles of money. But after this moment, we don't know whether they're fictitious or those names are real names of people. Uh, so, and then the money was counted. Uh, they are all in $100 bills. They were all counted, and uh, at the end of the day, we found uh, 8, $8 million, dollars is we are doing a preliminary investigation because by right it is not our mandate to investigate financial uh, crimes at, uh, at the airport so it is EFCC so we are only going to do the preliminary investigation put uh, the suspect and the amount, amount together and hand it over to uh, EFCC for uh, an in-depth investigation A simple advice to Namdi Kanu, return home only if you're ready to embrace the consequences. Now, on the moves to create a Southeast security outfit similar to Amoteko, I share an earlier sentiment. The answer to the myriad of security challenges in this country does not entirely rest on creating security operations or state or regional police or even equipping and enhancing the work of the Nigerian police. What would give us a glimmer of hope, like I earlier advocated on this program, would be real efforts at addressing the fundamentals of unemployment, religious extremism and ethnic sentiments that is currently amplified by heartbreaking levels of poverty among a high percentage of the population. But this is the fertile ground for grooming all kinds of criminality and finding recruits to perpetrate more mayhem in the country. And that's our program for tonight. If you missed it, there is a repeat at 3 p.m. every weekday and you can join us again at 7 p.m. for a fresh episode. Thanks for watching and until next time, please be well.